In my last video, I talked about whether or not gender is a social construct. I talked about how culture views biological sex and gender as two different things. And for the longest time, when someone used the phrase gender, it meant the same thing as sex, male or female. Now the term gender no longer applies to your biological sex. Gender is about how you identify or your self-perception. Right, Sex has to do with what's between your legs, while gender has to do with what's between your head, which is why some people say there are more than 300 different genders. So the term gender no longer applies to your biology, but rather your psychology, how you think. Now, for the majority of people, their self-perception is congruent with their biological sex, but for a small percentage of others, it's not. And the mental dissonance is called gender dysphoria. And gender dysphoria is a condition where a person senses that their gender identity, how they feel about being male and female, may not align with their biological sex, and they experience emotional distress as a result. Now, at this point, uh, the, they, they have not attempted to change their gender. They're just kind of confused about their identity. And they may have a, a biology of a male, but they feel in their psychology more like a woman. And so this causes, you know, uh, tremendous emotional distress. And so transgender, though, is when someone chooses to identify with their psychology when it does not line up with their biology. In essence, elevating psychology over biology. And it starts by changing gender pronouns, he, she, they, them, and it moves then to, you know, puberty blockers, cross hormone sex therapy, and in some cases, reassignment surgeries. So the question is, what does God say about all this? Now, obviously, we know that God wants us to love everyone because God loves everyone. And so I want you to know that if you are experiencing gender dysphoria or if you've come out as trans, whatever stage of transition you are in, you are loved by God. And if you attend my church, Grace City Church, you are a valued member of our community. And I'm thankful for the ability to speak into your life and pastor you. So our response should always be love. But does that mean it's okay? Should we affirm and applaud people who transition? Is, is transgender how God made you? You know, Lady Gaga said, don't ever let a soul in the world tell you that you can't be exactly who you are. In other words, don't let anyone judge you for who God made you to be. And it's pretty good logic. I mean, if God is good and God doesn't make mistakes, and if that's, you know, how you were born, and ever since you can remember, there's been this disconnect between your, your mind and your body, well, then it's maybe how God wants you to be. And that logic would work if there were only two chapters in the Bible, but there is a third chapter. And in it, we find God's explanation for all the struggles that we face. It's called the fall. See, Genesis 1, 27 through 28 says this. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. So in chapter one, God creates mankind in his image by creating them male and female. There are only two genders. In chapter two, uh, these man and woman, male and female, they come together in marriage to be fruitful and fill the earth. It says that when God saw what he made, he said, it's good. But in the very next chapter, sin enters the world. Adam and Eve fall into sin and their fall was great. It destroyed God's good and perfect world and broke everything in it. The fall broke everything. Our, our mind, will, emotions, our, our sexuality, gender, desires, our relationship with God and others, everything was broken by the fall. And so the struggles that we face, it's not because that's the way God made us, it's because sin messed with what God made. See, we all experience this. Even as Christians who have the Holy Spirit living inside of them, they, they know what it's like to have desires for the wrong things, to, to be drawn to what is unholy, to feel something as natural and right in your heart, and yet it be completely wrong. 
See, Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked who can know it. See, our hearts, our desires, our loves, our longings have all been messed up by sin. So we can't trust our hearts. We can't allow our feelings to determine what is right and true. We can't allow our desires and longings to define our identity because they've been broken by sin. Romans 8, 23 we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. So we as believers groan inwardly for the redemption of our bodies because even though our spirits have been made new and our soul is being transformed, our bodies haven't been redeemed yet. We still live in bodies affected by sin and the brokenness that came as a result of the fall. And for some, that brokenness manifests as gender dysphoria. For others, it's uh, attractions and desires to things that aren't good. For others, it's anxiety and depression. For others, it's eating orders. For others, it's addictions. There are a thousand different ways we are broken by sin. So what does the Bible teach about gender and sexuality? Well, the Bible teaches us that God made us binary, that he created us male and female, but sin broke our bodies. It, it, it messed with our sexuality, gender, and attractions. So Jesus came once to forgive us, and he will come again to fix us. He will heal, restore, and make everything new, including you. And when you enter into eternity, you will receive a new glorified body free from the effects of sin and brokenness. And this is our hope, that all things will be made new, that sin, suffering, sickness, disease, brokenness will be no more because all things will be made new, including our bodies. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, what do I do if my child is experiencing gender dysphoria? You know, do, do I let them choose their gender? Do I take them to a, a clinic and allow them to take puberty blockers or cross-sex hormone therapy? Well, a recent Gallup poll found that 5.6% of U.S. adults identify as LGBTQIA. That was up from 4.5% in 2017, while 16% of Generation Z identify themselves as LGBTQIA. In other words, Gen Z is increasingly becoming sexually ambiguous. So while gender dysphoria is something that affects a small percentage of the population, something else is going on with Generation Z. A Brown University professor published a study that found that rapid onset gender dysphoria among teens and young adults may be a social contagion linked with having friends who identify as LGBT, identity, politics, peer culture, and increase in internet use. Helena was 14 when she found out that she might be attracted to both boys and girls, and she began to explore what this might mean for her through an online community on Tumblr. It was there that she learned about various gender identities, and she read story after story of people identifying as trans, and she eventually started relating to the stories and began to identify as trans. Uh, Helena learned that on Tumblr that taking, you know, testosterone was the next step to take, and she began cross-hormone therapy. She was on testosterone for two years before problems began to pop up. It is common for women on testosterone to experience a lot of anger. This problem became more common. She started feeling miserable. She said, you know, I, I was angry all the time. Everything made me angry. I feel like I've been put through the ringer with all these emotional changes. And she said it really messed with her mental health. And Helena also learned that high doses of testosterone in females cause their ovaries in uterus to atrophy. And so Helena was a wreck emotionally, mentally, and physically. She, she had to realize that it just wasn't working, so she detransitioned back to female. See, the, the media's promotion of all things trans has caused a significant jump in gender dysphoria, especially among young females. 
The Travistock Centre in London, which is the main gender clinic in the UK, treated 17 females in 2009, and in 2019, they treated 1,774. That is a 5,000% increase in 10 years. You know, research on rapid onset gender dysphoria reveals the following. 63% had one or more diagnosis of psychiatric disorder or neurodevelopment disorder, including a traumatic event, cutting, ADHD, OCD, eating disorders, and bipolar. Many of those with rapid onset gender dysphoria had trans friends and reported feeling more popular once they came out. 72% when taken to a gender therapist or physician, were never encouraged to explore issues of mental health before proceeding to gender transition. Colin Wright and Emma Hilton wrote, the large majority of gender dysphoric youths eventually outgrow their feelings of dysphoria during puberty. Affirmation therapies that insist a child's cross-sex identity should never be questioned, puberty blocking drugs advertised as a way for children to buy time to sort out their identities, only solidify feelings of dysphoria, sending them on a pathway to more invasive medical interventions and permanent infertility. This pathologizing of sex atypical behavior is extremely worrying and regressive. See, transitioning moves you further away from who you really are, not closer to who you really are. Walter Hare struggled with gender confusion at the age of four. At age 42, he underwent gender reassignment surgery. For eight years, he lived as a trans female, Laura Jensen. During that time, he was still unhappy and attempted suicide. He has since gone back to his original gender and has given himself to gender transitioning study. And the statistics that he compiled from major universities says this. 20% who undergo gender reassignment surgery regret it. 41% attempt suicide. 50 have depressive symptoms. And 90% psychopathology, meaning that they have an unaddressed mental health issue. Transitioning doesn't resolve the dissonance they feel between their body and their mind. The good news is that Jesus offers a wholeness that will bring unity between your biological sex and your sense of self. And that wholeness doesn't come by changing your biology, but rather giving attention to what's going on in your heart and in your mind. And that is true with every situation we encounter. Jesus gives us the power to deal with our heart and our mind so that we can be whole. So what should parents do? Number one, be informed. You need to know what your child is looking at online. As a parent, you do not have to respect your child's internet privacy. Look at the things that they are watching and reading online. Find out with who they're engaging with on social media and who their friends are at school. You have to be informed. Number two, be involved, right? You need to be involved with what's happening in your child's life. You should know where they're at, who they're with, what they're thinking. You need to be involved. Time spent with kids creates influence in your life that you are going to need. So be involved. Number three, be in charge. You are in charge. Not the school, not the counselor, not the gender clinic. You are in charge. When it comes to your children's identity decision, you are in charge. It's ridiculous to think that a child is capable of making a gender choice. Like we don't fully develop mentally until the age of 25. So we're not gonna let them determine their gender, take puberty blockers or cross hormone therapies before their mind is fully formed. And number four, be in prayer. You know, pray the same thing that I pray for every single person who calls my church their home. I, I pray that people broken by sin would increasingly grow in the wholeness that God alone can give by his power. Because the answer to your identity isn't found in your feelings, your friends, or even transitioning. It's found in Jesus. And so we pray that they would come to know and grow in the wholeness that God alone can give. 
If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, smash that like button for me, share this video with a friend, and let me know what you thought in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to this channel and click on that bell so that you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching. And remember, if it's not good, God's not done.